I wanted to look briefly at the idea of, of the existence of God. Now, I could have posted a video about, you know, all these different things and everything, but I wanted something that was a little more personal. I, I saw that a lot of people uh, post stuff about, you know, oh, why I don't believe in God and everything. And ultimately, what it comes down to is God's existence isn't, it's not dictated by life going well or bad. That just has no bearing on whether God is real or not. When bad things happen, that has no bearing on whether God exists or not. See, God, by his nature, doesn't act the way that we think he should or want him to. And so we have to be careful that we don't say, I don't believe in God because he didn't make my life what I think it should have been. See, if you actually look at it, that really doesn't have any bearing on it. That's like saying, okay, so the sky does not exist because my life has not gone well. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm really not trying to make um, light of uh, whatever situations are in your life and everything. I, I get that some people have had really bad experiences in life and some people worse than other people. But I will say this, one of the greatest causes I've seen for people not believing in God is Christians who are unloving and um, just generally mean-hearted. And I grew up in the church world. I have experienced so many of them I can't even count. You don't know how many times I hear people say, I don't go to church because of people. I I get that. I really do. Um, I, I do think that you're making a mistake, not because of them, but because of you. I think we need church. You know what I mean? It, it's something that reminds us that there are other good people. And here's the thing. And keep this in mind. If all the good people leave church because of all the bad people, then there will be no people left in the church but the bad people. See what I mean? And the world needs the church as a place of safety from this terrible, cruel world that that, that, that is all around us. It's just a place of, of worshiping God and of, of healing and of moving past you know, the things that assault us in this world. So we can't let bad people win. I mean, just because they call themselves Christians doesn't mean that they are a Christian. I think we've seen that time and time again in history. So there's just a few quick reasons why I believe in God. First, more of a scientific uh, leaning. First off, I find it completely preposterous to believe that everything came from nothing. If you truly understand what nothing is, we're talking about nothing. Nothing can't bring everything. That's just nonsense. You know, there, there's this old argument that says nothing that began to exist. I'm sorry, everything that began to exist, I said that wrong, uh, came from something. Well, we know that what we see around us began to exist. We see the signs of age everywhere. Time is a factor in this universe, which why is time a factor? Why was time created in, in, in the Big Bang? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Why did everything come from nothing? Next, assuming that everything did come from nothing, how on earth did it arrange itself to where intelligent life is possible? And not only that, but intelligent matter. Things have purpose. Like, for instance, the sun exists to give light and warmth to the earth. And the earth exists for us to live on it. Why do those things exist and have a reason when they came from nothing? Just why is it not just pointless matter? How was everything able to arrange itself? Third off, why was life able to spawn where life did not previously exist? These are things that have caused a lot of a lot of concern and speculation. And not just from the Christian community, we're talking about scientific community too. I mean, even if you just read science fiction, you see that this is this is something that people have genuine questions about. Well, maybe the life there was put by an alien. Okay, where did that alien come from? Um, so I, my point, I guess, here would be that that alien or whatever that caused that life must have been God. That, that that thing, whatever it is that, that causes life to come where life was not exist in existence, had to have been um, God. Um, 
these are things that, that I don't believe because other people have told me. I believe because I've sat there and thought about it, and this is what I believe. And it just doesn't seem likely to me that there's not a God. It seems like there's more evidence for the existence of God than there is evidence for no God. I know people, by their nature, like to do whatever they want them to do. And I know that people, by their nature, want to believe that they are their own final authority. And so it doesn't really surprise me that people want to dis, uh, disagree or disprove that there's a God, because that's by our nature. By our nature, we are very self-concerned people. But yet I've seen glimmers in this world of something beyond, something better than human nature. And I would argue that that something better is, is, is God, something good even. Somewhere in the back of my mind is still this feeling like there's something else. And yeah, it could be just delirium, or it could be this or that or the other thing, but it just it doesn't make sense. Now that none of it makes sense, if there is no God. So then we have the idea that another problem, consciousness spawned where consciousness did not exist. And the only thing that, that spawned consciousness was humanity. This just doesn't make sense. Science has so many so many holes in it, and the thing is, science can't give us all the answers, and that's that's one of my biggest problems, is we put all this faith in science, but science has such a limited scope of what it can tell us. Science can tell us things of, of what is observable and what is probable, but it really can't answer so many questions in, with finality. Is there something beyond the physical? Science can't tell us that. It... <laughs> Is there such a thing as truth? Science can't tell us that. Science can only affirm the things that we can or cannot see with our senses. Well, that's a big gap in knowledge. What if there's a whole existence out there besides what science is, uh, tell, can tell us about? I mean, that's not so crazy. Christians aren't the only ones that assume that. Uh, you know, what about Buddhists? They assume that there's something beyond that. What about the experiences that people have had? of spiritual things. I mean, they can't just all be written off so brashly. What about, you know, demonic or angelic encounters and everything? You can't just lump it all together and say, because I don't believe that, I, I just throw it away. You, you can't do that. That's not scientific. Science doesn't say, let me just pick and choose what evidence I like and throw the rest away. Science is about critically analyzing and thinking about stuff. And I love science. And it's because of my love for science that I have believed in something beyond science. Why are the laws what they are instead of something else? Why are there laws that govern our, 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 our entire existence? And why are they what they are? I started asking this question years ago, and I, and I don't have a sufficient answer. And then I watched a show called Futurama, which is a comedy show, a comedy science fiction show. And the professor, in one episode, figures out, I mean, everything that's knowable, he figures it out. But then, you know, he, he starts going through depression because there's nothing else to be known, and he wins all kinds of prizes, and he just gets, starts becoming a drunk. And then he's, he realizes something. That's not what he realized. <laughs> he realized, why are the laws that govern the universe what they are instead of something else. And that's exactly what I had already come to the, come to the question of, but why? Why is there this order to it? Why? And we can't just simply say, oh, that's just the way it is. That's not science. Science asks the hard questions and it says, well, why is that? You know, it's easy to say, well, it rains because water falls from the sky. Okay, so where did the water come from? See, science isn't interested with just saying just because. Science is interested in finding out why. So why are these things the way they, they are? Why should macroevolution should have occurred? Ma macroevolution is basically evolution on a larger scale. Um, one species eventually through the processes becoming another species. There's no real sufficient evidence. We don't really know what that looks like. We know what microevolution looks like. Minor variations within a species according to adaptability. Okay, all right. But we've never actually seen macroevolution happen. We just kind of assumed that it must have happened because we have some evidence for it happening, but we've never actually seen it happen. And science is about observation, the science of observation. Well, it's really hard to be real dogmatic about something that we haven't actually observed. That's one of the big problems we have here. And so without having observed it, we can't answer this question, 
How did it happen when it shouldn't have happened? There seems to be no real, no real defining trait of why macroevolution happened. It wasn't because of, um, what's it called? Uh, when something is born with, um, oh goodness, it starts with an M. I can't believe I don't remember this word. Um, mutations. It can't really be defined or, or you know given over to because of mutations happened. Because mutations really aren't that beneficial. Not only that, but life had to have ex existed for life to exist. So that kind of doesn't really answer the question. Not only that, but we see some animals that evolved that aren't more complex. So we know that evolu macroevolution doesn't happen because of complexity. So what is the what is the defining trait? Why does macroevolution happen? Now there has been some fantastic, fantastic ideas, but unfortunately they're not provable at the current moment. So that leaves us with speculation. I would I would put it that especially because macroevolution seems to have stopped, at least for the time being, with once again no real cause. But that has happened before. There's a thing that's called the, the billion years of science or something like that where nothing really happened. So, I mean, okay, all right, that, that has happened before. But it doesn't really answer why did that happen. And that's kind of a weaker point all, considering all the things. I could easily be persuaded on that one. But I feel like those other ones are, are pretty good points. Let me move this sucker out of the way. Boop. Um, so, so just some more, some more things here. God is the only re reason for purpose. If everything just began, that would mean that nothing really has a purpose. That would mean that no matter what I do with my life, it doesn't matter. Because there really is no purpose. There's no higher calling. There's no reason in loving my neighbor. There's no reason in doing something for another person's benefit. I should just do whatever I want until I die because I am going to die. And there's no reason for it. See, some people somehow convince themselves that they're dying for some, they're, they're living for something noteworthy. But without God, there really is no such thing as noteworthy. Oh, well, I died, you know, I died for America. Well, what happens if America is destroyed in the future? Well, then your death would have been literally for nothing because you just delayed the inevitable. Now, obviously, some people might see it a little bit different than me. I'm more talking about, in my own case, I'm not meaning to. Uh, discredit what veterans did. I, I think what veterans did is in in incredibly important. I do believe that there's purpose in this world. I'm saying if you don't believe in God. Then there's a problem. I mean, so, okay. All those people who died believing in something, who died for a reason, their death would have meant nothing. People who are arrested, what does it matter if they were arrested? Justice, what does justice matter? Something just make us feel better? Then why do we even bother with government? Why don't we just go out and shoot somebody if they make us mad? See what I mean? Like there, there, there's no purpose. There's no, there's no reason for life. So we have a meaningless existence without God. And then there's all the, there's another big problem. See, there's this is called the, the, the social justice generation. People, you know, justice warriors, you know, and everything. So okay, all right. And I'm not not criticizing that. That's fine. But we don't know what's going to happen after we die. What if we spent all this time trying to get civil rights and equality for women and, and I mean, I'll go down the list of stuff that we were trying to accomplish. And let's say some, some new superpower comes, wipes out America, and is a, once again, a male-oriented society that just believes that women are, are, are less than property. All that campaigning and a lifetime of fighting for justice would have mattered? Not at all. Not to mention that there really is no idea of justice if there is no God. Which brings me to my next point. God is the only reason for morality, and I believe that there is right and wrong. I believe that you shouldn't murder. I believe that you shouldn't steal. I believe that the rules aren't just what I say that they are. I believe that there is a standard beyond what my society says is right and wrong. Otherwise, what right do we have to criticize? What right do I have to criticize that women don't have equal rights? 
why not just accept the way things are? Because there is no right and wrong. If there is no right and wrong, then ultimately I can live however I want. If I have a slave, you can't tell me anything about it because I'm not hurting you. And what if the slave likes being a slave? Well, what's it to you? Why try to make this world a better place if there is no idea of better? If good doesn't exist, then why does my conscience tell me that good does exist? Psychology is real big on this idea that we're born like a clean slate, but it's mostly unproven. But a lot of people believe it even though it's unproven. If everything just evolved, then morality is a meaningless invention based on the whims of the few. Basically, all that I have to do to make something right is make a good argument, make a loud argument, and get enough people to agree with me. That's it. If God doesn't exist. Some cultures are cannibalistic. Who's to say that they are wrong? Some marry children. We see that, for instance, in the Middle East. Who's to say that they're wrong? Especially if, if, it's, if it's agreed upon by the society, if the girl is, is in agreement with it, if she's not physically harmed by it, what does it matter? But we don't believe that here in America. We, we do believe in an age of consent. We believe in an age of, you're probably too young to marry. Why? Some have slaves, yes, even in today. In fact, there are more slaves now than there have ever been. There's sex trafficking, there's all kinds of bad things. So why should we do anything about that? Who's to say that they're wrong in, in having slaves? I mean, clearly they, they were stronger, more suited to over the other person. Maybe they deserve the right to own them. Nothing is more than a shouting match at the end of the day. Basically, if I can prove my point by yelling it loud enough, you have to concede to my point of view. See, I, that's not good enough for me. That's not good enough for me. It doesn't make sense. To me, it makes it only makes sense if there is a God. There, that would mean that there is morality. That means that mean, mean that there is purpose. And that would mean that there's some explanation for why everything just suddenly came together and formed into the what it is. That also, um, if we don't believe in God, we have... A very big problem about near-death experiences, they're unexplainable. Also miracles. Oh, well, there's no scientific proof. No, I know that there's. you can't retest miracles. Miracles, by their definition, are, are things that happen outside of the occurrence of natural order. Which brings me to another point. Who's to say that this is natural order? We spin around a burning ball that keeps life possible. I mean, goodness sakes. That just sounds a little bit far-fetched if we actually stop and think about the things that we take for granted just because they are naturally occurring. You know why people don't believe that, that people lived really, really long a long time ago? Because people don't live a long time now. That's the only reason. But I have seen miracles with my own eyes. There was this one guy who was at a youth camp, and he, he was born where one leg was shorter than the other. So he always walked like this, and it actually caused a lot of back problems and head problems. Well, we were praying... And this is how we were at the beginning of the prayer, and this is how they were at the end of the prayer. Legs don't just ma magically grow. There's a, there's a woman I know at my church. She has always had back problems. A disc magically appeared where there was no, back, no disc, and she's had this problem for years, and it started to grow. How come miracles don't always happen? I don't know. I, I don't know. We have another guy at our church who has kidney failure. Um, almost died actually and been doing dialysis and the doctor took him back and said okay we'll do some tests basically long story short his kidneys have started working again after being dead with zero function for a long time that doesn't happen i don't know if you know anything about the human body or, or, or anything like that it just it doesn't happen that's not a regular occurrence um there was another girl at a youth camp where she was deaf she was born deaf she'd always been deaf well, actually, I don't think she was always deaf. I think that she went deaf at like two. Moral of the story being, she had been deaf for at least 10 to 12 years. And they started praying for her. And by the end of the night, she could hear. These, I was there for all of those things. Not to mention all the things that I wasn't there for. How do we explain these things? They're outside of the realm of science. We can't make the deaf girl go deaf again and then cause her to get re-healed again. We... 
all what we but we do know is is seemingly empirical evidence i mean you have people who know her hey this girl is blind is uh, sorry deaf oh well now she's not okay then we have another problem that god is more than me see people don't like that people want god to be subject to the same rights as we are subject to the same thoughts as we are we don't like someone who's better than us someone who's bigger than us we like to be the biggest dog so why would we invent a God that does things that we don't think he should? We read in the Bible about, like, for instance, the the, the Israel killing killing um, a lot of Canaanites, including children. Well, I don't like that. That's not the God I signed up for. But then we see also see him do things like come to earth, born as a, born in human form, and then die on our behalf. We see him say, on the very day that you eat of the fruit. You will die in Genesis. And then he doesn't kill them. He lets them live 900 years longer. What? We don't see that kind of stuff happen. He said, okay, these people are evil, so I'm going to kill them. But instead, I'm going to run it by Abraham. Why would you do that? You know, we have a God who does things that we don't like, we don't agree with. And by all means, you shouldn't do that, God. And yet, he tells us that his ways are perfect. How do you make sense of that? See, if I was going to make up a God and make up encounters with the God, he would act how I think he should act. And he would affirm those things that I believe. Those, those things that I believe, but he doesn't do that. He affirms what is right and is not right, and he governs everything. And he's perfect. And that's hard for me to deal with. He's more than me. He doesn't think like me. He doesn't act like me. He doesn't tell me what he's thinking, and I can't get a one-up on him. He does things that I don't like, and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't do some magical incantation that causes him to respond how I want him to. I can't do some spell that will cause him to somehow act different than what he's acting. He does things... And that's just how he does. That is hard. And he's more than I could ever hope to be. See, if I ever tried my entire life to be the best person in the world, I would still be in need of a savior. I am not a good person. And I've seen people, they're not good people either. Mother Teresa herself, who most people would agree, even non-religious people would agree that she was a fantastic person. And yet she said that she was still in need of a savior. How good do I have to be before I can feel better about myself? And how come when I do a very simple thing, like accept Jesus Christ, I no longer have guilt or shame? Why is that a thing? How do now I have good sleep when I didn't have good sleep? How can my life change with such a simple thing? Then we have the problem about his word being singular. The Bible is incomparable to any other thing. And I know we could argue about a lot of different things like the Savior myth and all kinds of different stuff. That's a discussion for another day. I know we could believe, well, why do you believe in the Bible? It was written by people. Well, once again, that's a discussion for another day. But what we do know is it is unlike any other book. Uh, two books I would recommend to you. One is by John Oswalt. Um, it was called... Up there somewhere. Um, the Bible Among Myths by John Oswald. And the second one is called um, something like The Jewish World Eesh. Ancient Near Eastern Thought and the Old Testament by um, Walton, John Walton. Both of those books cover that, and I, I'll just go ahead and leave that to you, but his word is singular. I, I find it very strange that so many of the things in the Bible are there, and if you know anything about history, it's just like, wow, that's powerful. All right, that, but I, I've seen people influenced by demonic activity, and I've seen the power that the word has, and I've seen the power that prayer has. And I have felt things that are unexplainable. Now, I know feelings don't govern reality. I know that. 
but they still deserve to be answered. I have a very hard time. See, people be, people die for things that they believe that aren't true all the time. But people don't die for things that they know aren't true. But what we see with the early churches, we see them saying, hey, this guy called Jesus, he died. Everybody can attest to that. Even the Jews attested to that. But then he came back to life. The Romans didn't care. They wouldn't have stolen the body. The Jews would have presented the body once the Christian church started gaining power because they didn't like the Christians. And the Christians wouldn't have died if they knew that it was a lie. So where the heck was the body? It doesn't make a lot of sense. But yet you have these people boldly saying that this thing actually happened and that they saw something. And we're talking about hundreds, hundreds of people at the same time with no valid explanation except for what actually happened happened. And then dying for that belief. And then Peter, shortly before his, his death, said, we, we aren't following some cleverly devised myth. We were there for this. We were eyewitnesses to, to it. And it happened, it was written in such a short time that people who were actually there could have said, no, that didn't happen. But they didn't say that. And many came to believe. That is just astonishing. And that right there is, that right there, people start there, in, and that that's the hardest thing to believe. It's easy to believe that a God created everything. I mean, that just makes sense. Everything just came into existence. Come on. Like, what kind of fairy tale are, are, you, are you reading? What are you smoking? That just doesn't happen. Things don't just suddenly magically appear. I'm not going to point over here into my office and an elephant is going to appear. Or... Uh, a Big Bang is going to suddenly wipe out my house. Another Big Bang. Because it, it stands to reason. I mean, if there was one Big Bang that came from nothing, that then another one could spontaneously occur. I mean, that just... I mean, why couldn't that happen? So we have an eyewitness account of the death and resurrection of Christ. And remember, the resurrection of Christ, that's the climax of the biblical narrative. See, that's the hardest thing to believe. I find it ironic when people can believe in Jesus. They can believe that he died and was resurrected. They can believe that he was God. They can, all those things, they can believe that. But then they have a hard time believing that he could cause a, a, a large fish to swallow a prophet. I think if God made a fish, he could probably cause something super, supernatural like that to happen. Just, just saying. Also, there's the problems of the eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts um, from Moses' day. All Israel and Egypt and the Canaanites saw the things that were happening. The things that happened in Egypt, the things that happened on Mount Sinai, where all the people heard the voice, where all the people saw the things. And then in Canaan, again, miracles were shown. You can't simply discredit those things. Well, it didn't happen. Then why, oh why, does do those festivals exist? Specifically the one commemorating the Exodus. When it didn't ever happen, and why is it so ingrained in Jewish culture, when it never happened? That's something that has to be explained for. That is quite the societal phenomenon for something that didn't actually happen. So, once again, proving the Exodus is a conversation for another day, but we still have the problem of the Passover. And let me just, now, besides all those things, let me get a little more personal here about reasons why I believe in God. Now, you might say, this is a long video. Yes, because there is abundance of proof of why I believe in God. It's not one thing. It's a series of things. And when you put all those unlikely things together, it makes a really unlikely thing. Just a really unlikely thing. When I was a kid, my family fell apart. Um, I really had no, no, no friends growing up. Uh, really no one to express myself to. Uh, I wasn't really close to any of my family or anything, um, so I just kind of felt very alone. Um, I finally did make a few friends in, in high school, um, not anyone real close, but one of the nicest nicest people I ever knew uh, got hit by a drunk driver um, and died. And that was really hard for me to accept. Um, I got into pornography when I was um, nine. 
when I was uh, when I was nine, and I started having uh, <coughs> depression when I was about seven or eight, and I started having anxiety and panic attacks when I was about um, I don't know fifteen, but it got really really bad when I was seventeen, and well, things were a little difficult. Things were a little bit difficult. But through it all, God made himself real to me. And I saw that all those things that seemed like accidents, somehow all the craziness, in hindsight, it just fits together. Somehow it all belongs. And I don't understand how that's possible. I don't understand how this God that doesn't exist could have made himself so real to me. Where I would be in the depths of grief and I would just... I remember a few times almost killing myself, thinking that suicide would be better than living any longer in the pain. And I just remember something unexplainable stopping me. And I remember in sleepless nights and in tears, it just felt like a hand on my heart, something telling me it's okay. And see, that was different because the God that I knew was judgmental and hateful. And he had people who had to follow a bunch of rules. And this God that I experienced and encountered, he was totally different than that. And he showed himself to me in many different ways. First off, in prayer, where he would just say something into my head or, or, or into my spirit and just give me a sense of uh, calm. Where I would pray something and God would answer. It's just completely unreal. Unreal the things that God has done. And gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now this might seem like, oh, that's weird, but... There's been times that people have given words in church that were exactly what I was thinking, exactly what I was going through, and it's something that nobody else in the building was going through, and something that nobody else could have known that I was going through. By all rights, I was a good little pastor. I was a good little, good little Christian. They had no idea what was in my head and what was on my heart. And yet, they said exactly the words. Then there have been other times that I myself have been using gifts of the Spirit. There was one time... That I said a very, very specific thing about what somebody was doing. And then just encouragement from God. And I don't want to share it on here in case, you know, I, I really don't want... Um, it's not about me. I'm not saying me. I'm saying why I believe in God. And exactly to the word, what was said was exactly what that person was going through. To the word. And the encouragement was exactly what they wanted, what they needed to hear. And there's a problem about miracles. I have seen miracles with my own eyes. Then there's the idea of once again of providence, the things that it's like there's there's just this this hand that guides and directs and makes makes painful things have meaning. Why doesn't God just do away with the pain? I don't know. But I know that He will one day. He's promised it. But in the meantime. In the meantime, he makes the things that are painful have meaning. I know that I still have to go through problems, but I know that there's a God walking through me, walking through it with me. There's also, I have experienced him in my life, in, 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 in his word, in my life. That's just things I can't explain. I even did my own test for two years straight. I read and I read every single day and prayed every single day, and I felt such hope and encouragement and peace. And then I stopped for six months and didn't read the Bible once, didn't pray once. My thoughts got darker. I stopped having a purpose. It's like I, I felt this restlessness in my spirit, like why do I exist? A, a constant nagging at the back of my mind like there was something more. It, it, I can't explain it. See, I, I heard all my life that if you read read your Bible and pray that, you know, all these things, 
I never actually believed it, but then I did my own test, and it's for real. It's really for real. Past the rules and traditions and, and, and legalness and all that nonsense, God is real. He's very real. I've never been more sure of anything in my entire life. And some people might, might say, I believe in science. I do too. I love science. Science is fascinating. It's so cool. Some things are kind of scary, like studying black holes and that kind of stuff. Like, some things are way over my over my head, like um, that. What's that one area of science? Um, physics. Oh my goodness! You want to talk about something that's confusing for me? Physics, man. I can read the same thing over and over again. And just let's try one more time. <laughs> um, see, and and the thing is. Don't criticize me for believing in God when I haven't seen him personally, when you believe in ev evolution that you haven't witnessed it personally. See, I believe in evolution too, but I've never once witnessed it with my own eyes. I've never once seen one species turn into another species. I've never seen that. But I still believe in it. I still believe that it happened. Do I believe that that contradicts God? No. Do I believe that somehow takes away the power of God? No, I don't. There's a few things. I know that God works in time. He could have created everything from nothing at one moment, but he spent seven days doing it. Why? I know that he could have made me perfect and stopped sinning now, but he didn't. Why? See, God does things gradually. So is it far beyond reason that he also made things like animals gradually? No, not at all. Also, could the, could the fall, people sinning, could that have caused some of the things to happen, like sickness? Absolutely. I don't see any problem with any of that. I believe in God that I've never seen him personally. Because I've seen the evidence of him and I've... I know him. And I spoke to him just this morning. I mean, I, I know he's there. Science can't prove God. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But neither can it disprove God. It can give us sufficient hints. There's, for instance, the information in DNA. Where does Where did the information come from? We don't even know the majority of the information in DNA, what purpose it serves, if any. We don't know. Um, then there's, well, I already mentioned that the problem of nature. I mean, things are just so, so pretty. I mean, look outside. So the sun's shining. The trees are in their fall. So they're, they're, they're you know, doing their thing before the spring. How cool is that? There's such order in, in, in everything around me. It's just, everything just works. There's, you know, obviously the conscience. I, I know. I know. When I'm doing something wrong. And then I can enjoy things. These are just things that, to me, all things considered, everything that I've learned and, and studied, <coughs> it doesn't disprove God to me. It rather gives me more reason to believe in God. And honestly, I think after studying for years and years and years, I think it requires more faith to not believe in God. Because the things that I have to choose to believe are just outrageous. Like, once again, believing that everything came from nothing. By definition, nothing is nothing. You can't have something come from nothing. That doesn't happen. It just doesn't make sense. So then we have a few problems with, you know, okay, so what about problems? I, people have to go through problems. I get that. The, the truth is this life is frail and falling apart. We all die. And at all times, there are bad things happening in the world. But there's also good things happening, too. Bad things happen because for, for really two, three main reasons. We choose to live on our own terms. This is what I want to do. Okay. Well, you can do that. But there are going to be consequences for our actions. Another thing is because we live in a corrupted world. That's obvious to see all around us. You see disease, you see cancer, you see sickness, you see terrorism, you see, I mean, just problem after problem, anxiety, depression. I mean, go down the list of things that are going wrong around us. I mean, there's just, it's all over the place. There are signs that we live in a fallen world and that we ourselves are evil all around us. Hitler's genocide of the Jews and, and Polish and some other people too, you know, that probably is, a, is, is pretty good evidence. And... Now, here's more of spiritual things, because we have an enemy. The Bible calls this enemy Satan. Demons, whatever you want to call it. So we have a lot of different things going on. And all those things combine to make this world not perfect. But there is a hope for a day when things will be better. And see, it's that hope 
that carries me through the scares of, of, of uh, global warming, it, it carries me through the scares of World War III and nuclear warfare, it carries me through the scares of all those things that, that people are so concerned about, politics and Trump and, I mean, everything. I don't have to be concerned. I know what's coming, and this world isn't all that there is. This world might not go how I want it to go, but compared to eternity, this very short time of suffering doesn't seem like all that big of a deal. Not only that, but I'm promised that when I get there, things will be so much better than they are here. See, we want our lives to go well on this world, but even if our lives went perfectly well, we would still have a longing in our heart, and we still have to deal with the brokenness all around us. I suspect that there are more things spiritual than we realize. Maybe not everything, but more things than we realize. So you can choose to live with peace and joy and hope by living God's ways, or with bitterness, anger, and despair by living your own ways. Well, that just seems like a no-brainer. See, I might get cancer. That's a factor. I mean, look at how many people get cancer. It's, it's, it's a real possibility that I might get cancer. I might die in a hospital. I would hate to die in a hospital, but I might die in a hospital. I might die next year. My my friend that died, he he wasn't he wasn't but nineteen if I remember correctly. Well, if I'm gonna die anyways, if I'm gonna face sickness anyways, if things are gonna go wrong anyways, why get mad at God for the consequences of sin when He warned us that it would happen? Why not instead? Surrender my life to him and live with peace and hope. I mean, that's just, that's a no-brainer. I'd rather live with peace and hope. And even, get this, even if God, let's say God, there is no God. And this is just a complete delusion. All the evidences that I believe in are just hogwash. Okay, all right. L -l let's roll with that. I would rather die with hope than live a life of despair. I, I don't want to live that way. I've known depression my whole life. I don't want to live with no hope for tomorrow. I don't want to believe, believe that after this anxiety attack, there's nothing more but another anxiety attack. See, because I became agoraphobic. I couldn't even leave one room of my bedroom. And now I travel all around. I've Since I've gotten out of that room, I've been all around my home state and in the next state over and this year I, I have travel plans for once again in some other states I'm facing fears I'm moving forward I couldn't even go into the city I couldn't even go 100 miles around the certain city it was my kryptonite it was a place where it all got real bad and it just I couldn't I have been there two times last year and I have another plan to go next month and what happens if I have an anxiety attack? I'll get through it. And one day I won't have anxiety attacks anymore. Maybe not in this life, but you just watch. In eternity, I won't have any anxiety. And it seems better to me to live in a delusion of hope than to live in a reality of despair. But with that being said, my faith is not blind. My faith is not blind. It's based on science. It's based on well-reasoned arguments. It's based on philosophy. It's based on purpose.